<coughs> we only made it to like, oh, what was it, verse 8, I think, last week. But you know, this is a very important chapter, you know, just to remind you, whenever Hebrews was written, it was not written in chapter and verse. It was written as a letter to a certain congregation or a group of believers. Actually, they were Jewish believers. They were people that had came out or come out of Judaism and accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. They had accepted His death on the cross as payment for their sin. They had given their hearts and their lives to Him. They had seen the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit in their lives. And just to, to stop there for just a second, as a believer, with our faith placed in who Jesus is and what he's done for us, the Holy Spirit will move in your life to the degree that you allow him to. Amen. Amen. Okay? It's the, the, the moving and operation of the Holy Spirit is not an automatic, if you will, thing that just happens once we get saved. But we need, our, our faith needs to be properly maintained in the sacrifice as, as, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord Paul would write to the church at Colossae, so walk ye in him. Amen. And just a, a brief understanding there is, we receive Christ in what manner? What, what brought on or what made it possible to be saved? It's faith. Faith in who Jesus is and what he did for us on that cross. That's what saved you. Amen? Amen. And that, is, that alone is what has brought salvation. And as Paul would say there to the Colossians, as you have received, so walk. Live your life in that same manner, that manner of faith placed in Christ and him crucified. That's how the believer is to walk. He would say elsewhere, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by trusting in the Lord. We walk in, a, in, a, in an avenue of complete and total trust in the Lord, forgetting, not, uh, how would you say it, not considering, if you will, the situations and the circumstances around us. I want to tell you, the situations and the circumstances you see in your life, you feel in your body, they have no bearing upon your walk with the Lord, or they should have no bearing upon your walk with the Lord. Because we walk by faith. There's going to be situations. There's going to be circumstances. There's going to be things that come up in our lives that are going to be contrary to what we know the Lord has said, to what He has given in His Word. Anybody here is sick in their body or been sick in your body? That's contrary to what's in God's Word. And those things, they happen. These bodies are subject to the fall. Our lives in this world are subject to the fall. We've got all kinds of ungodly things all around us. And we are subject to those things. But those things do not define the word of God and our faith in this. See, our faith is to be paramount. That faith in who Christ is and what he's done for us is to take the primary position, if you will, in our life. Above all else that we see around us, above all else that we feel in our bodies, above all else, we are to rest, we are to take, 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 take strength in knowing that what God has said is going to come to pass. Amen. Yes. Regardless of what we see, if we never see it, we're going to look at that here in a minute. I'm, I'm trying to build up to something here, but we're going to look at that no matter what we see, no matter what we feel, no matter what happens, God's Word is paramount. God's Word is true, and you can take God at His Word. Amen? Amen? Amen. And here in, in Hebrews, in this 11th chapter, this portion of the letter that Paul, I believe Paul is the one who wrote this letter to the church there in Jerusalem or wherever it may have been, these Hebrew, these Jewish believers, because as we have stated because of situations and circumstances, because of their uh, being persecuted, because of them being 
if you will, kicked out of their families, being disowned by their very family members, those very that, that were the closest to them, there were some that were defecting. There were some that were saying, I can't handle this anymore. I'm turning around and I'm going back because back there I had some comfort. Yeah. You see, in this old life, we may have had some comfort, you know, what we thought was comfort. We at least, you know, had our family that, you know, when they weren't stabbing us in the back, they were saying nice things about us, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying that everybody's family stabs them in the back, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, we thought that was the good life, but we didn't realize that the good life was that life in Christ. Amen. Amen. And so Paul would bring up these examples of past believers and really bringing up some of the most notable mm -hmm. of those who believed God, Abraham being the first one here in verse 8. You know, it is said, and I think we brought it up some last week, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. You know, that seems like a uh, a somewhat of a uh, just generic type statement, but we don't realize the import of the power that there is in that declaration of faith that Abraham had. Abraham believed Amen. God. That's right. That, that word believe, that word trust, that word faith all comes from the same Greek word, which, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, would be pistis or pistis, or however it would be, be sounded out in the Greek, I don't know. But it all means, it all has the same meaning of to trust, to believe, to put your faith in him. Jesus would say there in a... a Luke, he would say, you know, if any man will come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. And we brought that up any number of times, that that word deny, when we take it back to its root meaning, it means to forsake as a first faith. And all of us, no matter who we are, no matter what kind of station we've had in life, our first faith is really to trust in us. We're taught that in this world. You know, the, the only one we can trust is us. You know, you can't trust anybody but yourself. Trust yourself. Trust your heart is another, you know, term that we'll hear a lot of times. And even though the Word of God would say that our heart is deceitful and wicked, and who can know it? We can't even know our own heart. But we can know that if we trust in the Lord, He's got our best interest yes. at heart, if you will, in mind. He only wants what's best for us. Sometimes we don't see that in the circumstances we go through. Mm -hmm. We don't see that in the difficulties of life that we might be traveling be in right now. You know, but he has come and he has promised to deliver us out of them all. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So Abraham... Hebrews 11, verse 8, it says, By faith Abraham, when he was called out, called to go out into a place which he should, he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went or where he went. Father, I'm asking in the name of Jesus you take these next few minutes. Open up our hearts, Lord, to your word. Teach us, Father. Let your Holy Spirit come in this place and lead and guide us and direct us, Father. As we look here, we learn of you and we learn to trust you more. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So by faith, and we've talked about that in the very first part here of Hebrews chapter 11. He tells us what that faith is. That faith that's placed in that coming Redeemer, that faith that's placed in the promise that God has given, that faith, that trust, that believing that is placed or settled and resting. You know, when we hear the term in Christ, we see that little I-N, that N, it's E-N in the Greek, but it's a primary preposition denoting or 
displaying a position of rest. Where are we resting at? Are we resting in who Jesus is and what he did for us on that cross? Or are we resting or are we... Actually, we won't have any rest other than in Christ. But anytime we're looking to something else or we're trusting in something else, there really is no rest there. But we're, we're looking to that to supply what only Christ can supply for us. Yes. May it be peace or, or happiness or joy or whatever it might be. You see, we're only going to find what we need. Those things for life and godliness are only found in Christ Jesus. He's given us all things for life and godliness in, that means they're resting, they're placed, they are in the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. And only as we rest in who he is and what he did, what is resting, it means we're not out there trying to make it happen on our own. We're not trying to knock doors down or we're not trying to go about and pull down strongholds within ourselves. But we're trusting in the Lord that what he has said he's going to do is going to come to pass. Amen. That is that faith that he's talking about here in, in this eighth verse. That faith that Abraham had. He believed God. What did he believe? He believed what God had told him. A lot of times we say, oh yeah, I believe God. And yet we go about trying to do things in our own strength and ability. Right. You know, there's that 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 uh, term. I think maybe Susie said before. Let go and let God. That's right. Let God handle it. Let God take care of you. Walk by faith. He'll open up the doors. He'll move. You see, He'll move on you to move. Mm -hmm. hmm? Abraham was told, "Get up and get out." Abraham could have sat there like some of us do today and say, well, I'm just waiting for God to move me. I'm waiting for God to tell the horse to go, to pull the buggy, the cart, whatever it might have been. I'm waiting on God to, you know, move the animals, you know. You see, by faith, because Abraham believed God, God said, get up, leave your father and your mother, leave this country, leave this place, and go to a place that I'll show you. You see, he didn't get the map out and, 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 and God say, okay, we're going to go here and this is the route that we're going to take. He said, get up and go. Yes. He's calling us today to get up and go in some places mm -hmm. and some things. Right. To trust him. So by faith, Abraham, when he was called, hmm, we've all been called. Mm -hmm. We've all been called out of this world you see, that's what Abraham, the call that Abraham received from God. Leave your father's house. Leave this country. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith Amen. the Lord. Right. <laughs> mm. Yes. We've all been called to come out. Have we come out? Why haven't we come out? See, Abraham, he was called to come out. He had to come out completely. You see, he couldn't hang out a little bit there in Ur and then look to the front and go, oh, I'm going to go on a vacation and we're going to check out the promised land. But then we're coming back to Ur. That's how we are sometimes in our walk with God. You know, oh, we want to check out and see is the, is, we'll put our toe in the water. Ooh, it's cold. Or, oh, yeah, that's nice. You know, and, and we just, we're just not quite there sometimes. But see, Abraham, he was there. He was committed. As some have said, he was all in. Are we all in for Christ today? Are we ready to say, Lord, I'm leaving it all. And I'm going to follow you. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Take up his cross today. There's a whole lot there that we're not going to cover this morning. but You get the idea. So by faith, Abraham is using the, the most... Uh, He's using the father of the faith, really. It's what the Word of God will talk about with Abraham. We'll call Abraham. You know, it'll say that we, they are not all of the seed of Abraham that are born of Abraham. But we who by faith have put our trust in Christ, who have trusted in who he is and what he's done, we are the true seed of Abraham. Those that are the seed of faith. Faith in Christ and him crucified. That is the object of the faith. Abraham believed God. 
you know, and all that God said. We don't know how God spoke to Abraham, whether it was an audible voice, whether it came to him in person, how he spoke to him. We have, we haven't been told, but we know he did. That's right. And we know Abraham believed it. Amen. Now, Abraham was an idol maker. Mm -hmm. He was one of them who made the statues of whoever, Ur or, or, or Astroth or Baal or whoever it may have been. You know, he made a living. He had to forsake all of that to follow the Lord. You're going to have to leave something behind if you're going to follow the Lord. Right. You're going to have to leave this world behind if we're going to follow the Lord. I'm leaving this world. <clears throat> By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance. He didn't get his inheritance right away. What is an inheritance? An inheritance is something you receive upon the death of that one who told you you could have it or put it in the will as we understand it today. God promised Abraham a land, but God promised Abraham way more than just that land. He told Abraham that through his seed, there again, Abraham had to believe God because Abraham, well, he was like 80, I think, at the time of the call. Sarah was like 75 or something. I don't remember exactly what, but they were pretty old. Any ladies here today, any guys here today at 70 want to have a kid? Not me, buddy. I'm only getting something. I don't want no more kids. And I know you ladies, I mean, once you guys get you know, 35, 40, it's like, Mah. don't want no more kids. But see, they didn't have any at all, but yet God would say to Abraham, through your seed, He's going to bless the entirety of the world. And Abraham's like, I ain't got no kids. How's this going to take place? But he still believed God. Mm. You see, that was the promise. He took God at his word. Not only for the inheritance of the land, he took God at his word that there was going to be some kids born, or at least one. He took God at his word there. Well, he's going to show it here in a minute. So by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. You see, with faith comes obedience. Mm. Faith without works is dead, is what James would say. You see, faith without works, or to say you have faith and there are no works, it's a dead faith. It's an unproductive. See, faith will produce that faith in Christ and in Christ, just like I said earlier, that faith will produce, and the means by which that producing or that production comes is by the power of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and in our lives. Proper faith will produce proper works. Abraham's faith was that proper faith, if you will, that good faith, that faith placed in that word that God had given, and through that, because Abraham believed God, Abraham said, I'm going to go because God has told me, and God has said, I'm going to give you this, thus, and that, this, and that, and the other is going to come to pass, and I'm going to put my trust in God Almighty, who has said with his own word, I'm going to follow after him. I'm not going to look back. I'm not going to look to the old things, but I'm going to look forward to that. Christian, today, look forward. Yes, yes. Amen. Don't be looking back. Looking back, you're going to see your past failures. You're going to see where you were before, and you're going to wonder how in the world is God going to do it. Just trust him. Yes. Look ahead. Keep looking toward the prize of that high calling in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. By faith. Mm -hmm. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing. He didn't know where he was going. He didn't know what, what was going to come. What was going to happen? You see, faith doesn't have to know all the particulars. It just needs to know that God has said it. And I'm going to believe Him. And I'm going to take Him at His word. And I'm going to keep on keeping on with Him. Yes. Amen. Even though I don't see Abraham. Abraham, the only piece of the promised land that he had. What was it? 
He had a cave to bury, to be buried in. He had a grave. Yep. That's all Abraham had in the promised land. Yes. But still, Abraham believed God for year after year after year after year. Mm. Lord, praise God. Yep. A lot of times we say, oh, I'll believe God for this amount of time, or I believe God and we'll go believe in Him. But, you know, as the years go on, we start to wonder, did I really hear from God? You think Abraham didn't think that? He probably did. But yet he still persevered. Yes. He still remained. He abided in the faith. He remained trusting in the Lord. Though he didn't see it. Though it didn't come to pass. He was expecting. We'll see it here in a few minutes in my notes I wrote. He was expecting that no matter what God had said it, every morning when Abraham woke up, he was saying, God, is today the day that I'm going to see that city, that I'm going to receive that inheritance that you promised me. He would, he would go about his day as they traveled and soldiered through that promised land, though he didn't receive it, though he was still full of the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Jebusite and all the other ites that were in the land. They still lived there and had control. But Abraham, as he traveled through that land as a pilgrim and as a sojourner, he was a, he had that earnest expectation. Yes. Today we need some, yes. some believers with some earnest expectation yes. that though I haven't seen it today, God, when I wake up in the morning, am I going to see it in the morning? God, when I turn the next corner, and am I going to see what you promised me around that next corner? I want to tell you this morning, hang on, believer. Yes. Yes. Though you haven't seen the promise that God has given, you haven't seen the healing that is yours in Christ Jesus. In the morning, it might just be the day. The next time you turn the corner, it might just be the day that whenever God's Holy Spirit overshadows you yes. and that healing comes upon you yes. in the moment, yes. in, in just an instant, yes. keep on trusting Him. Yes. Hmm. Yes. When you might see that loved one, that son or that daughter that has cursed God, but you've been praying, Lord, get a hold of their heart. Yes, yes. You might wake up in the morning and they're going to say, Mama, I gave my life to Jesus. Amen. Mama, I gave my heart to Him. Thank you for praying. Thank you for not giving up on me, Mama. Daddy, whoever, keep on. Keep on. Don't, give, don't lose faith because God is faithful. To do that that he has promised <laughs> for you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mm. Be encouraged. Yes, yes. Amen. Don't get that's what this is all about here. This is a a a list of encouragement for you and I today as we read through this eleventh chapter of the book of Hebrews. <clears throat> so not knowing where he went, it says by faith he sojourned in the land of of promise. There's a definite article there before promise. Of the promise. That specific promise that God had given to him. That this is your land. Mm -hmm. Do you realize even today the nation of Israel does not occupy the, whole tree. the totality right. mm -hmm. of the land that God had promised to Abraham? I mean, how many thousands of years has it been? But you know what? Whenever you go and you read Revelation, when you go and you read through the prophets as we've been doing on Thursday evenings, you're going to see God has time and time and time over. He didn't just say it once. He didn't just say it to Abraham. But he has told it to those people over and over and over again that I'm going to restore, that you're going to occupy that. They will. In this coming millennial reign of Christ, they will occupy from the Euphrates all the way through whatever the total dimensions of that land is. They will occupy. And there ain't nothing that no Muslim, there ain't nothing that no Hitler or Haman or anybody else who would try to stop. There's nothing that no Antichrist is going to be able to do that's going to stop that promise.
promise of God from coming to pass. There's nothing that the enemy can do in your life that's going to stop the promise that God has given you in Christ Jesus if you will not stop believing. The Word of God says we fight the fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Amen? Didn't say it was going to be easy. It wasn't easy for Abraham. It was drought. There was threat of death. You know, the enemy going to threaten you with all kinds of stuff. Mm, do you know? Oh my! Do you know you can walk through this life, no matter what the threat is, no matter what's going on around you with the nation or the city or the whatever, whatever the doctor might say. Do you know? That you can say, but my God has promised to deliver me. And I want to tell you, you might wake up one morning. You're going to, it's not you might, you will. Let me put it that way. You're going to go to bed some night. You're going to be worn out. You are going to be just so tired. Your body is going to be in a place to where maybe you can't even move. And you're going to close your eyes that night. But my friend, if you keep holding on, you're going to wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're going to wake up and you're going to jump out of whatever. I don't even know if you're going to be in bed when you wake up, but you're going to open up your eyes Glory. and you're going to be in the glory of God. Yes. And I'm going to tell you at that time, yes. there ain't going to be no sickness in your body. Exactly. There ain't going to be no, what do they call it, the snack, snack crack, the, the Rice Krispies. Some of you young folks don't know what I'm talking about, but you wake up in the morning and you go snap, crackle, and pop. Uh, you you know? My knee will pop, my ankle will pop, my hands will pop. Popcorn chicken. That just happens. Mm -hmm. But there's coming a day. Mm, yes. And you're going to go to bed one night, snap, crackle, and pop. <laughs> but when you open your eyes that morning, whenever that morning happens, and there ain't going to be no pain. There ain't going to be no snap, crackle, and pop. There's going to be, oh, glory, glory. Yeah, you ain't going to have, you're going to reach for them glasses and go, where's my glasses? I don't need them no more. Oh, that's right. Amen. Mm. Amen. Oh, wait, my hand don't hurt no more. My back don't hurt no more. Amen. If you keep the faith. Mm -hmm. Be encouraged. Yes, today. amen. Hang on Child to that. That's what this is all about, to encourage you as a believer not to quit. Yes. Not to give up. They didn't quit. Those that we read about here in this 11th chapter, they had, they held on to the promise of God that he was going to send that Redeemer, that he was going to provide and give that which he said he was going to give, though they didn't see it yet. That's right. They got it. Amen. They hung on. Yes. They kept hanging on. They if them. they can do... Mm. They saw them. This is before Calvary, folks. Yep. This is before the Holy Spirit came in to dwell permanently right. yes. in the hearts and lives of believers. If they could hang on then, yeah. what's your excuse today? Yeah. You have that Holy Spirit of promise years. living and abiding in you, helping you, leading you, teaching you, guiding you along the way. And you want to quit? Yeah, that was a bad thing, quitter, quitter. You know, that was, that was a dirty, it was a dirty, rotten dog if you quit and gave up. Don't quit, church. Hang on. Don't let anybody lead you astray. See, there's, there's a lot of tactics of the enemy. But we got to come to that place in our lives where we are we determined within ourselves, in our, not in our strength, but we determine, I ain't letting go. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care what thing, how things get. I'm going to hang on because I know that I know that I know that my Redeemer lives, is what Job, Job would say. I know my Redeemer lives and that He will deliver me. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. By faith, He sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same 
promise. It says he looked for a city, which had, or he looked for the city, as it is how it's written in the Greek, which has the foundations, whose builder and maker is God. That's what I was talking about. Each morning when Abraham would get up, well, am I going to see it today? Am I going to find it today? Am I going to come around this next hill or this next valley? Am I going to see it? Oh, as we go through the valley, when we come out of the valley, are we, are we going to see that city in the valley? Yes, amen. Mm, see, a lot of times we get all flustered because of the valley. We get all upset because of the trial. You might just see the city in the trial, folks. Amen. Hang on. Don't quit. Yes, amen. Yeah, you're in pain. Mm -hmm. You're having hard times. You might just see it in the in the, in the valley, yeah. in the hard times, the deliverance. Mm -hmm. Don't quit, Lord. Every do you realize every trial, every mm -hmm. tribulation, everything you go through, we need to start looking at it as an opportunity. Yeah, they're trials and tri but they're opportunities to see God move. Yeah. They're opportunities that in the midst of them, we're going to see that city. We're going to see that promise take place. It's going to happen. When you least expect. See, oftentimes we're on the mountaintop. Oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we're giving praise to God. We should be. But you know, I'm going to guarantee you, you're going to see more of the promise of God fulfilled in the valley. Than you are on the mountain. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Yes. God's going to show Himself faithful in the valley. Yes. More so. I mean, He's faithful no matter what. Mm. But see, we have a tendency to want to quit in the valley. On a mountaintop, it praise God. Oh, yeah, we want about hallelujah. We got the victory. In the valley, when we need the victory, that's whenever those thoughts of quitting come up. Mm. Don't quit. Keep the faith. By faith he sojourned in the land of the promises in a strange country. Mm. This world is not our home, folks. We're strangers and pilgrims. I'm going to say that here in just a minute. By faith, he says, dwelling in tabernacles. What does that mean when he says dwelling in a tabernacle? Tents. It's a tent. It's not a permanent place. It's in the wilderness, yeah. We need to hear that this morning. Yep. This world is not our home. This is not our permanent abode. That's right. We need to realize this is just temporary. Yep. A tabernacle is this flesh. This flesh, yep. But it's just a temporary dwelling place. Well, this anybody want to dwell in this flesh forever? Mm -hmm. Not me, man. I'm wanting that glorified body. Yeah, I'm wanting that tent whose builder and maker is God. Jesus said, and, and y'all take this as you will. He said, I go there to prepare a place for you. In my Father's house are many mansions. Man. If it, you know, we think a lot of times, oh, that mansion, that's going to be that big old stately man there with them big old pillars and all oh, this and big old rooms. You know what? Personally, I think that mansion is going to be that glorified body. That's right. Yep. right. That's it. Christ is building. He's preparing that place for you and I, that place, that glorified yep. body whose builder and maker is God. He yep. formed Adam out of the dust of the earth. He made that man. Yep. You see, I think he's making us a new body, mm -hmm. a new tabernacle, a new dwelling place. And compared to this, Maybe. it's a mansion, folks. Yep. Yeah, we often think about, oh, I'm going to have my living room in there and I'm going to have some friends over and all that. I, I, I thought about, when are we going to have time to go, you know, sit down in the living room of that mansion? Uh -uh. No. We're going to be worshiping and praising God. Yes. We're going to be about the Father's business. Yeah. It's not going to be all up there, bling, 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 playing hearts on clouds. Either. That's going to work for you. I, I <laughs> just not seen that ear heard and even into the heart of man. That's what God has in store for them in love. Oh my, what he has in yes. He's built. Anybody got a telescope where you look at the things online and the stuff of what all is out there? Yeah. Mm. God didn't make that just to be pretty. I think he made that for you and I. Yep. 
so that we can see the splendor of his glory. Amen. Amen. What kind of Star Trek you look like? You know? <laughs> he, wants, he wants to share with us all his glory. Amen. That's what he has for you and I, whatever that might be. He looked for the city which has the foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith, through and by, in, same thing, through faith, through faith also, as well, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age, like I said a few minutes ago, any 60-year-old ladies want to have babies? Sarah wanted a child at that age. She wanted a child that that was a, a, a if you couldn't have a, a, a child back in that day, you were looked at as cursed by God, basically. God has a purpose. Whatever you're going through. You see, all up through Sarah's life, people would look at her and say, well, she just isn't blessed by God, a God, you know, whatever those gods may have been back then, and even God himself. But yet God has a purpose in everything we go through. And trust in my purpose. That his will and his purpose is for the best. <clears throat> Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength. <clears throat> Don't go over that so fast. Through faith, Sarah received. Do we need strength today? <laughs> for whatever the situation is you're going through. Whatever it is you're facing, whatever's coming down that we can see coming down, you need you need strength for what yes. you can't see. But we need strength for what we do see as well. Amen? Amen. How are we going to receive that strength? I want to say something. Everything you receive from the Lord comes by one means, by faith. And that faith <laughs> placed in that sacrifice. Yes. No other way, folks. That's in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That is Christ. Yep. Who He is and what He would do. Every spoken word, everything of the Old Testament speaks of Jesus. Jesus would say it. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. Everything speaks of who He is and what He would do for us at Calvary. Do we believe it? Do we trust it above everything we see, above the situation, above the concrete, above the checkbook saying zero? Mm -hmm. Do we believe that God is going to take care of us in any and every situation? Yes, amen. Hmm. Through faith, Sarah, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, yes. to have a baby, to get pregnant and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful. Right. She judged God. Yeah. But she judged him faithful. Yeah. She said, God said it. Amen. We know the story. Yeah. Sarah, when she first hit her, <laughs> how was that going to happen? And God confronted her and said, you laughed about it. Oh, 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 oh. How can we do that, don't we? No, I didn't do that, God. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. But in the end, she believed. Yes, amen. When you mess up, turn back to him. Yes, sir. Believe that if we will confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and <laughs> cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. See, Sarah... You, you ever wonder how she came to that place? I think Abraham was telling her, trust God, baby. God said he's going to give us a, God, a child. Just trust him. She was encouraged. Sometimes we need to encourage one another to continue to trust in the Lord. Sometimes we need to, con we need to encourage one another. That, yeah, although the situation seems bleak, God's made some promises and he's going to see us through. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. 
That's why we're here. That's why we gather together as a body of believers. Church with me. You see, it's hard for the enemy to get you to quit when your brothers and sisters are coming alongside and saying, hey, come on, keep coming, keep going, keep trusting. He's going to see you through this. See, a lot of times we get off by ourselves. The enemy comes against us. He knocks us about. You know, if we stay in that kind of a position, he's going to beat you till you're down. I'll beat you till you quit. Mm-hmm. Don't forsake the assembly of yourselves together. Mm-hmm. We need that encouragement. Mm-hmm. We need that exhortation. Yes. We need that help from one another. I need your help. Mm-hmm. You need mine. We need each other. Amen? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because she judged him faithful, he had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one. Mm. And him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore, innumerable, from Abraham and Sarah. From them, from that one, Abraham actually, because that's where the seed was, she conceived. How many kids did they have? Two or one. 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 They had Isaac. One son. Now, look what God has done with one. One plus God equals what? Yeah, it's a majority, but it equals a multitude, which is by the seashore, innumerable. One plus God is in mm. mm-hmm. One plus you believing God is innumerable. What God can do through you if you will just believe him. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. It can't be counted. It can't be numbered what God can do. If you'll believe him. If you'll trust him in your situation, in your children's situation, in your family, in this nation. Do we believe him? Will we take him at his word? There's, therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead. No hope. So many as the stars of the sky in multitude. I can't remember that number. Somebody said something a while back about how many stars there were. A trillion, billion, trillion, so much that we can't even really count them all. And more showing up every day. Mm. Excuse me, Jeff. Mm. And as the sand which is by the seashore, go count the sand. I <laughs> dare you to try. <laughs> but that's what God has done. The one that would believe him. And he would give one to them. And from that. Now, this is a pro- this is a prophetic word here. Because we know that what were there like six six million Jews that came out of Egypt, somewhere in that neighborhood, mm-hmm. or six billion or something like that that were killed by Hitler in the Holocaust. Too they counted too those. Too they could probably count those that are here now. But there is a coming a number. But you're not going to be able to number of those off. And really, what did we say earlier? We are the children of Abraham by faith. Multitudes upon multitudes upon multitudes. I think that's probably what's being talked about here. Not just physical seed, but spiritual. Believe God and it's accounted to him for righteousness. How many will believe him? It's an innumerable number. Now, verse 13. Here's the clincher for us. These all died in faith. These all died still believing, not having received the promises. Hmm. Where are we at today? 
day in our life. <clears throat> Are we still believing it? Though we haven't seen the healing, we haven't seen the salvation of our loved ones, we haven't seen what we've asked God for come to pass, so we say, oh, I just quit. How many times I've heard, oh, I prayed and I prayed and it just didn't happen, so God ain't real. you said that? Have you thought that? Sometimes we have. Thank God we ain't thinking that now. But see, just because we don't see it happening, don't mean it's not going to happen. They didn't see it. Abraham didn't receive what God had showed him except for Isaac. And then he asked him to give him up. He's going to talk about that in a minute. Then he asked him to take him up there to the mountain and sacrifice him. And Abraham was willing to do it because he believed God. Mm, boy, to have that unwavering faith. What did Jesus say about faith? As a grain of mustard seed. She'll say Move to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and it will but obey. These all died in What a testimony. Amen. Died still believing, though they didn't see what God had promised. Mm. That's basically speaking of the coming of Christ, the, redeem the redemption of the world. Not having received the, the promises. Mm. Notice he says here they didn't receive. <coughs> but they saw it. But having seen them afar off, having seen no one, spiritually speaking, hmm, spiritually seeing, Amen. understanding, knowing what was to come. Do we have eyes to see and ears to hear? Or are we only seeing what's going on around us? Oh, I've got to see it to believe it. That's something we say quite often. No, you don't. Abraham didn't see it in the physical, but yet he did in the spiritual because he believed God and God allowed him to see that. See, God's going to allow you to see it. Though it may not happen in the physical, he's going to allow you to see in the spiritual hundreds of years down the road what it is that he has for you and I. What, he, what it is that he's provided for us in Christ. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded. Mm, persuaded. I put that. That means to convict by word and by action. That's very important to understand. But having been, they were persuaded. They had a conviction by the word that they had heard the word spoken to them that it was going to come to pass and they believed it. They were persuaded of them and embraced them. We need some believers to embrace some promises yes. today. Amen. You and I need to be embracing yes. some of the promises that God has shown us as, as given in his word. Hmm, this is a, a thing spoken. It means to welcome, to embrace, to receive gladly. They embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. What did we say earlier? This world is not my home. Yeah. We need to realize that, folks. No. Mm -hmm. As a believer, we're just passing that. Even, even as unbelievers, this world is not the home of the unbeliever. The unbeliever, is he, see, home speaks of our eternal abode. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to spend eternity? For the believer, we're going to spend eternity. Our eternal abode is in the presence of our God. Yes. Amen. For the unbeliever, his eternal abode, his eternal home, is the hell that was created for the devil and his angels. Amen. There's no purgatory. That's right. There's no in-between. You're not going to give some money to a rotten bunch of people and buy your loved one out of perdition. That's right. Yeah. 
where the tree falls, that's where it lies. That's what the word says. When you die, do you die in faith? Or do you die with a lack of faith? Yes, amen. Faith is the only thing you take with you. Faith is the only thing that gets you. Faith is the fuel, the gas in your engine that gets you to heaven, if you will. Mm. Some are running low on that faith. Be encouraged this morning. Be encouraged to hang on. Be encouraged. Don't quit. Don't give up. These all died in faith, have not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them and embraced them. Embrace it today, folks. And confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Whenever you say, I ain't given up. Whenever you say, I'm going to hang on. I'm going to keep trusting in God. I'm going to keep believing in His Word. That's an affront to the world. We covered that here a while back. That's an affront to the world. They hate to see that because you won't give up. You will hold to that faith. You're going to hold to that Word of God. You're not going to quit and give up. And the world hates you for that because they say, look at what you're going through. Look at your situations. Look at what's happening in your family. And still you're going to hang on to your God. You better believe I'm going to hang on because my God is the only one who can fix those things in the family. He's the only one that can change those circumstances in my life. I'm going to hang on like a bulldog on a bone and I ain't quitting. I ain't I ain't giving up. I don't care what happens in my body. I don't care what happens in my mind, in my family. I'm going to trust the Lord. Yes, amen. Mm. Praise God. Mm. Yes. Don't quit. Don't give up. Quitters never win. And winners never quit. Mm. Mm -mm, even if you're the bad news bears. <laughs> For they that say such things declare plainly, straightforward. Hmm, what are you declaring straightforward to the people around you? They're watching. They're looking. They're seeing that they seek a country. And truly, oh, oh. Hmm. <coughs> Here's where we have a problem. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. What's he saying there? If they had been mindful, as I looked that up, that uh, mindful there means to keep in memory, to be reviewing, to be going over, Again and again and again. If they had been going over, if Abraham, be mind, be be mindful here, folks, of what I'm just saying, what you declare. If they had been mindful, if Abraham had gone over and over, saying, "Oh yeah, I said I remember back in Ur." Oh, we had this back in Ur. Oh, in Ur, you know, in my dad's place, you know, we had this and that. Oh, things were just wonderful and grand. If they had set their, you know, the Word of God says, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. You see, that's what, what this is talking about. If they had been mindful of where they came there might have been a longing to go back. You see, today in the church, in our lives, in our walk with the Lord, we oftentimes look back and say, oh, them were the days. Yeah. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah, whenever I used to do, you know, too much, we glorify all that junk. Oh, when I used to do drugs, or I did this, or I did that, you know. Oh, blah, blah, blah. No, forget about all that. That's what he's talking about here. It ain't about where you came out of. It's where you're at today. What you're looking to today. What you're looking for. You see, they were mindful. Abraham would go over and over with Isaac and with Jacob and, his, and all of those around him. He would be saying, I remember when God told me. I remember when he, in his word I read. Hmm. 
I remember yes. the promise that he's sending a redeemer. Yes, ma'am. Mm. I remember he said he's going to give me a seed. And through that seed, all the earth would be blessed. I remember he said he's going to take me to a land and give me this land that flows with milk and honey. Yes. God's given you those promises today. Are you looking back on yesterday? Or are you looking ahead at what God has promised you? Be looking ahead. Yes. Be looking to yes. the promise that God has given. What are you looking for today? Are you looking for the return of Jesus Christ? The rapture? Come on. Or are you looking back? Back here. Mm -hmm. I said it a while back. You can't go forward looking back. You gotta keep your eyes on the prize of the high calling yes. in Christ Jesus. Uh, yes. hmm. Be looking ahead. See, faith looks forward. Right. Everything else looks back. You can't drive looking in the rearview mirror, folks. You're gonna have a wreck. You look and you're trying to drive this life looking in the rearview mirror. You're gonna end up shipwrecked. Mm -hmm. Paul would say here in Hebrews. Mm. If they had been mindful of that country from which they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. You see, if we're constantly looking back, looking back at the hard times, looking back at the good times, whatever it might have been, if we're looking back at those things, then we're going to be wanting to go back there. And we're not going to be wanting to persevere in faith. Right. Persevere. Hanging on. Keeping the faith, remaining, abiding in Him. Mm. But now, they desire a better country. That is a heavenly. Wherefore God, oh, mm, mm. boy, look at the double meaning right there. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared for them a city. Mm. You know, God is going to be, I don't know if you could say God is going to be ashamed, but it says here that he's not ashamed to call him his their God. Therefore, he's not going to allow you to call him your, his, him your God if you're looking back, if you're unfaithful. And you're, oh, I remember when. I remember being on that auction block of sin. Satan had the bid, highest bid, and Jesus came in and paid the price. Amen. And now I'm looking yes. forward to all that I have in him. Look forward to the yes. promises. Amen. Look forward. See, they were looking forward to the promise that was to come. They didn't have no time to look back. Abraham was waking up every morning saying, where is that seed going to be today? <clears throat> we can wake up every morning, Lord, is my healing happening today? Yes. I'm not looking back at the doctor's report from yesterday. Lord, I'm looking forward at the healing you promised me yes, in, in, in your word through Christ and what he did at Calvary. Lord, I'm looking for that healing. Lord, I'm looking for that son, that daughter to come to you. Lord, I'm looking for the promise that you made for me. Lord, I'm looking for that. I'm not looking back. I'm looking for what's ahead. I'm looking for every time I turn the corner. God, is am I going to get that phone call? The Lord, you move. What are you looking for today, church? Right. Look ahead. Yes. Look in faith. See, faith always looks ahead. Now they desire a better country. That is a heavenly. <laughs> what do you desire today? For, for God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, huh, when, when, he was tried. You see, it's not a matter of if you will be tried. It's just a matter of when. Trials come. This trial here he's talking about, there ain't none of us been tried like this. So, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. Notice he says he offered him up. Well, we know through the account there in Genesis that he didn't actually kill his son. But do you know in the mind of Abraham, he did? 
he was willing to give his son as that sacrifice that God had asked him for. Because he believed God. Yes. What did it say earlier? He believed God and he obeyed. Same life here. And Isaac wasn't no little boy. Isaac was believing God too. Isaac was obedient to his father. Yes. Even though Isaac was a young man. Maybe they say like 17 years old or maybe even older. Strong enough he could have fought the old man off. I got a boy who thinks he can fight the old man off sometimes. He wouldn't have done it too. He might be stronger than me, but he ain't smarter. <laughs> but anyway. Just wouldn't have done it. He obeyed. And he in his heart had already sacrificed his son. Right. When, was, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son of whom it was said that in Isaac thy seed shall be called. So God, listen to this. This is the promise that God had given to Abraham. In Isaac, you know, Abraham said, oh, is he going to be Eleazar? Is he going to be that? You know, is he going to be my heir? No. God said, that it will be your son Isaac. It will be him. Yeah. That is where you're seed. That is where everything's going to come from. Through Amen. that multitude, Abraham believed that. Abraham, in his heart, offered his son, but he believed that if he had to do it physically, that because God had made promises, God was going to raise him from the dead. That's right. Mm -hmm. Good Isaac. Mm. Do we believe that? Do we have that kind of faith today? We say we have faith, but yeah, let some hard stuff come about and we go all willy crazy. Mm -hmm. Throw up our hands and Wah! you know, let a little, a little something happen and we just Wah! we all come unravel. God's given you promises. Amen. Yes. Going to take him at his word. He's promised to never leave you. He didn't promise you weren't going to get sick. Right. But he promised he'd never leave us or forsake us. Right. You see? He didn't promise that you wouldn't go broke. But he promised he'd be there with us. We make dumb decisions sometimes. Yeah. We eat the wrong thing, get sick. We uh, spend money where we shouldn't, go broke. You know, we do dumb stuff. Mm -hmm. Even in our dumb stuff, God's still there. Yes. A lot of times in our dumb stuff, if we just listen to Him, we wouldn't do the dumb. Right. Yeah. Amen. Anyway. <clears throat> by faith, Abraham, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up. Yeah. Even from the dead, from whence also he received him as a heir. Mm -hmm. Abraham is saying, I was dead. This body was dead, incapable of producing children when Isaac came. So therefore, if God's asking me to give him up, I'm going to do it. Because God raised this body from the dead, if you will, he's able to raise him yep. from the dead. You see? That's mm. the gospel right there. Mm. Mm. He did it once. He can do it again. Amen. Mm -hmm. Trust him. Amen. His word will never, ever, ever fail. Right. You sinned and you messed up. That's your sin. Yes. He's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you Amen. from all. He's <clears throat> now walk with me. Amen. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Accounting that he was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence he also received him in a figure. By faith, Isaac. Oh, oh, oh yeah, we gotta hear this. By faith, Isaac right. blessed Jacob and Esau. <laughs> Concerning things to come. 
by faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped leaning upon the top of his staff. Okay. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. What's the source of this blessing? You know, a lot of times we'll, we'll read that and it'll be, you know, we, we remember where he crossed his hands and he pronounced it. But you know what this blessing was? This blessing was rehearsing in their ears the promises that God had made. That God, how God had brought them out of her. How God had delivered them from this. How God had moved for them here and moved for them there. That was the blessing. You want to bless your children today? Tell them how God has moved in your life. Yes. What we did this morning with testimony. You blessed those that were here around you, yes. hearing you. You were blessing them by telling them what God had done for you and them knowing and understanding. If they did, if he did it for that brother or that sister, then God can do that for yeah, me. Yeah, That's the yeah, blessing that's right. that we need to be blessing yeah. those around us with and reminding them that God is able to take care of you in your time of need or whatever the situation is, then God will take care of you. Amen. He'll move for you. That's yes. the blessing. Are we telling our children and grandchildren that? Yes. You know, the, 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 in the Old Testament, they were told, tell this to your children. Yep. Remind them of all that God has done. Yep. Don't let them forget because when they forget, when they forget, they fall away. Yeah. Mm. Why do so many in the church today fall away? Our young people. Forgot about God. Because nobody's telling them. No. Nobody is reviewing to them the promise. Bring into remembrance. Yeah. Mm. They're certainly not getting into His Word and reading them. Are we telling them this? Tell them. Tell them. Tell them what he's done for you. There is not a person in this place can refute any of the testimonies that were told to us this morning. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the person telling us those testimonies that what took place was in their life, they know what happened. Amen. And I can't say, Brother Greg, you a liar. That didn't happen in your life. That was just last week. You a liar. If I do, I'm a dodo. <laughs> You know? Yeah. But it blessed right. those here. Yes. Those here. Yes. That's how he blessed his children. He blessed them. He, 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 by faith, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshiped leaning on the top of the staff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, by faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave con commandment concerning his bones. They went down into Egypt. Joseph was in Egypt. Everybody remember that story? Joseph was in Egypt. Joseph, he was he was boss man down there. And here comes his brothers. And he says, hmm. But he didn't hold a grudge against them for what they had done to him. That's right. He made it possible for them to have a place to live during that famine. Yeah. And we all know what took place eventually, what does it say? It says there arose a king that didn't know Joseph and care about him, and they put the children of Israel in bondage. <laughs> but by faith, Joseph, knowing the promises that had been told to him, given to him, shown to him by Jacob, he knowing those promises, he said, we ain't staying here. Egypt ain't our home. We got a place. That promised land, promised to Abraham, promised to Isaac, promised to Jacob. We're coming out. Do you know today, church, you're coming out. You already came out. Yes. You got a yes. promise that God is your deliverer. He is your healer. He is, you're going to come out of this thing and you're going to trust in Him. Amen. Or you're you trust in him going to bring you out. Amen. Joseph saw that. He knew that because he believed God. Mm -hmm. Joseph went through everything he went through. He was in jail. Mm -hmm. Falsely accused. Mm -hmm. But he still believed right. God. Yes. By faith. Do you get it this morning? Mm -hmm. Are 
Are you trusting him this morning? No matter what happens, no matter how much old Arthur shows up in your body, you're going to believe God. You're going to trust him. No matter how many snap, crackle, and pumps you go through in the morning, you're going to trust him. Amen. You're going to believe him. Even if they get harder and worse every day, you're going to trust him. Because one day, you're going to go to bed with snap, crackle, and pop, and you're going to wake up in glory. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. We could go on and on and on, but we're out of time. So Joseph died. When he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel. You're coming out. You're coming out. Anybody need help believing the Lord this morning? I hope not. Because I hope you can read this and by that trust in Him. But you might need some help this week. Yes. When things start coming down around you. When the enemy starts buffeting and trying to box your ears. Go back and read this. And know that God is faithful. He saves. He was faithful to save you. The greatest miracle that could ever take place. <coughs> he saved you. He can deliver you. Amen. Amen. Let's stand this morning. I want to give opportunity this morning that if you don't know this faith, if you're listening on Facebook or YouTube or whoever, wherever you are, you can know him this morning. And you can have that faith and that trust. Believe in Him. And all you got to do is say, Lord, I believe. Forgive me my sin. I put my trust in You. That what You did on the cross paid for my sin. Come into my heart. Forgive me today. In Jesus' name. Father, take this word this morning minister to your people. Lord, give us a determination, Father, to hold on, to not quit. Lord, we know the time is soon. It is sooner now than it was when we begun this morning. And Lord, I'm just asking for you to move in the hearts of your people. Give us an abiding faith, Father, to trust in you. In Jesus' name.